Greetings. I hope that you did well on your first exam. I know that you uh, uh, just took it recently. Uh, keep in mind, if you're watching uh, this video before you've seen um, the upgrade, I still need to. I still have not done this. Uh, as of this moment, I have not added the 10 points of extra credit. Uh, some of you, by the time you watch this lecture, it will already be added. Uh, we move in the second part of the course to what I think is a much more exciting. Uh, I like this section of the course more than I like the first section of the course. Uh, and we start uh, the material for the second exam uh, on the Supreme Court. And I titled uh, this lecture, uh, The Supreme Court, or I Observe Old Cushing is Dead. And I think that this is especially uh, appropriate. Uh, I think it is appropriate uh, given the fact that unfortunately uh, recently we had the death of really an icon, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was an icon before she was on the Supreme Court. Uh, she died recently at age 87. Uh, she had been on the Supreme Court since 1993 when Bill Clinton uh, nominated her to the court. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, argued the first Supreme Court case uh, in which the Supreme Court struck down uh, a law based on gender inequity. She uh, is often referred to as the, the Thurgood Marshall of the women's movement. And of course, I'll talk about Thurgood Marshall later and how uh, he really was the champion uh, for black or African Americans. Uh, in civil rights in the 1950s, 1960s. And then he served uh, on the Supreme Court for approximately a quarter of a century. Uh, Thurgood Marshall was the, the hero, the role model uh, for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And of course, there has been uh, a firestorm of controversy over whether President Trump should or should not have nominated uh, Justice Barrett uh, to possible confirmation on the Supreme Court to replace her. Uh, the argument is, is that this is a new form of politics, that when Barack Obama had a nomination in his last term, the Senate led by the Republicans said, no, this is uh, during an election year and the people should have the right to choose. Uh, and now these same Republicans are saying, well, our president has nominated someone. Uh, we have a duty uh, to confirm. Uh, even though in this case, the Republicans uh, appear to be the hypocrites and the bad guys, uh, I will tell you, and I don't know this because uh, this is a hypothetical, uh, but I honestly believe that if the roles were reversed, the Democrats would probably be just as hypocritical as the Republicans. To me, uh, the behavior is really unacceptable. There should be one standard. Either a president nominates someone uh, in the last year of his term um, or he does not. Uh, the closest parallel we have to what happened with Donald Trump and Justice Barrett was many, many years ago. It was in 1864 when Abraham Lincoln was president. And an opening occurred in the last month uh, of Lincoln's presidency. And he said that he, uh, or before the election, I should say, uh, and he said that in this case, uh, I will not fill that, uh, that position until after the election is over. So uh, I, I just want consistency. And it would be nice if both parties would agree on what the standard should be. But the reason that I tell this story, you've, you've heard a lot of this on the news. You can go on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, or whatever news outlet you go to. But what I want to add to this, uh, if you look uh, in your notes, the first overview is the Supreme Court is a very political institution. And I want to go back to the title, I observe old Cushing is dead. Uh, this quote was from Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson was told that one of the justices that George Washington had nominated, in fact, he was the last original justice on the Supreme Court uh, to die or to resign, that he had died that night. And Jefferson said the following, I observe old Cushing is dead 
At length, then, we have a chance of getting a majority on the supreme judiciary. For ten years has that branch braved the spirit and will of the nation. Listen to the last sentence. The event is a fortunate one, and so timed as to be a godsend to me. And of course, the reason is, is that up until tonight, our political opponents had a majority on the Supreme Court. But once we nominate Mr. Cushing's successor, we'll have a majority on the Supreme Court. Until, the, uh, until tonight, until this event, our opponents decided what the Constitution was, and now we decide what the Constitution is. So certainly, if you think that politics with this confirmation of Justice Barrett is new in unchartered waters, it's not. The Supreme Court is a very political institution and has been for a long time. Put several stars next to number one because there are three potential exam questions in my first overview, three potential questions for the exam. First, all federal judges, including Supreme Court justices, are nominated by the president. One of my friends, uh, his wife, uh, is a federal judge. Uh, she was nominated uh, to the U.S. District Court. In fact, she is uh, a judge uh, in Fresno, and the president nominated her. So all federal judges, not just Supreme Court justices, are nominated by the president. That's one potential question. Second, they are confirmed by a majority of the Senate. Majority, that means 50% plus one. And they serve for life. And if you take a look in recent years, about half of the justices that have left the court uh, have died and about half have retired. Uh, and if you look at the last two judges to leave the court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, of course, died in office. And before her, uh, Antonin Scalia died in office. So the last two judges to leave the court left by death. Uh, before that, we had uh, several justices who just decided to retire, uh, such as John Paul Stevens uh, and Anthony Kennedy. Uh, the historical average or tenure for Supreme Court justices has been 15 years, meaning that half of the Supreme Court justices who have served in American history have served more than 15 years and half less. And in recent years, the tendency has been longer and longer service for one reason that should seem very obvious to you. Uh, and for one that is a little more mysterious, uh, the one reason, of course, that Supreme Court justices have been serving longer is because medical care has gotten better, uh, people are living longer, uh, and so certainly that explains part of it. Uh, the other reason that isn't uh, explained uh, in many cases is that over the last half century, uh, presidents have been nominating younger justices to the court. For example, when Clarence Thomas was nominated to the court, uh, he was only 43. Uh, Justice Barrett, who has just been nominated by Donald Trump, is only 48. In fact, since 1972, the oldest justice that has actually been confirmed to serve on the Supreme Court was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, our justice who just recently died, and she was 60. No other justice, 60 or over, has been nominated to the court since 1971, I believe, uh, was the last time when Richard Nixon was president. So obviously the politics are very clear in this first overview. Uh, first, presidents are going to overwhelmingly nominate justices of their party. Uh, that does not mean that justices are always the justice that the president thinks they're going to be. According to a lot of recent studies, uh, the guesstimate is that presidents get uh, a justice uh, philosophically 
that they think they're going to get about 80% of the time, which means that 20% of the time, presidents get fooled. They don't get the uh, nominee they think they're going to get. And let me give you an example. Uh, President Eisenhower was a pretty moderate Republican. Uh, and in his last press conference, a reporter said, Mr. President, looking back on your eight years as president, did you make any mistakes as president? And Eisenhower smiled real big and said, yeah, I made two mistakes and they're both on the Supreme Court. And, and what he meant was that Earl Warren and William Brennan turned out to be very liberal justices, even though Eisenhower believed they were going to be moderate to moderately conservative. Remember, once justices are on the Supreme Court, uh, they're independent uh, and they may not be what the president thinks they're going to get. Uh, some have said that John Roberts, who everyone thought was going to be real conservative, has been conservative overall, but he was the uh, chief justice who uh, uh, upheld Obamacare, for example, and a lot of Republicans said he sold out his party. Um, justice McReynolds was nominated by Woodrow Wilson in the last century. Uh, Wilson thought he was going to be very liberal, and it turned out that once he got on the court, he became increasingly conservative over time. So presidents usually get philosophically and temperamentally a, a justice that they want. But because of the independence of the court, sometimes justices deviate from what the president thought who nominated them to the court. All of us believe that Justice Barrett, if she does get confirmed, and I believe she will, uh, is going to be a very, very conservative justice. But there is a 20% chance that she will surprise us. The rest of that first overview, the Senate is far more likely to confirm a nominee when the, a Senate majority and the president are of the same party. Statistically, that's true over 90% of the time when you have a president and a Senate majority of the same party, nominations tend to sail through uh, very, very easily, which is why everyone believes that Justice Barrett will be confirmed because the president, Mr. Trump, is a Republican. The majority on the Supreme Court are Republicans, and therefore the belief is she's going to be confirmed quite easily. Now, the last part of that statement might not make sense to you. How is life tenure political? It's very political. Uh, a lot of people told Ruth Bader Ginsburg when Barack Obama was president to retire so that Obama could replace, a, replace you with a justice that's temperamentally like you. Ginsburg believed that Hillary Clinton was going to win and she was going to retire when Hillary Clinton became president, and then Clinton would nominate a liberal like her to replace her. Well, unfortunately for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that didn't happen. Donald Trump won. And as a result, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was trying to hold on until after the election, hoping that Joe Biden would win so that she could retire and Biden could replace her with a liberal. So in this case, that didn't happen. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, and in this particular case, it appears that the liberal icon, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg has been the inspiration, she has been the leader uh, of the liberal wing of the Supreme Court, uh, it appears that this liberal icon is going to be replaced by a very conservative woman who is going to try to undo uh, her legacy. Uh, and so usually justices will retire uh, when they have a president of their party so that the president will replace them with someone who looks a lot like them. I only got through one overview in this first uh, mini lecture. Uh, I will resume the overviews in the next lecture.